One of the most common questions I've been asked by my patients on a low carb diet is whether they should be concerned about high cholesterol levels. It's not uncommon for people who switch to low carb to see their LDL cholesterol go up. And in most cases, their doctor will become alarmed and recommend a statin to bring those levels down. But is that really warranted? Is high LDL cholesterol a reliable indicator of heart disease risk in people on low carb diets, especially if they don't have any other significant risk factors like high blood pressure or insulin resistance? And do statin drugs really reduce the risk of heart disease and early death in people on low carb diets with high cholesterol that haven't had a cardiovascular event like a heart attack or a stroke yet? These are exactly the questions I'm going to answer in this video. It turns out there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation about the relevance of high LDL cholesterol on a low carb diet, so it's time to set the record straight. Ready? Let's dive in. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Kresser here with another Tuesday tip video for you. Low carb diets have risen in popularity over the past two decades and for good reason. They're effective for weight loss and addressing metabolic problems like insulin resistance, high blood sugar, and high blood pressure. But one criticism of low carb diets, at least in mainstream medicine, is that they tend to increase LDL cholesterol levels. And as I'm sure you know, LDL cholesterol has historically been viewed as a significant risk factor for cardiovascular disease. While it's true that high LDL is associated with a higher risk of heart disease in many studies, recent research over the past two decades has revealed that this relationship is inconsistent at best and is more nuanced than the conventional view suggests. Let me give you a few examples. First, studies of people with familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH, a condition that causes very high LDL cholesterol levels, don't support the idea that high LDL alone is a significant risk factor for heart disease. If LDL cholesterol is inherently problematic, we'd expect cardiovascular mortality to increase in people with FH as they get older because the longer they live, the longer they've been exposed to high LDL cholesterol levels. But that's not what we see. In fact, cardiovascular mortality decreases in people with FH as they age. Older people with FH have similar levels of cardiovascular mortality to younger people without FH. What's more, people with FH have a lower risk of death from all causes than people without FH. Now, there are numerous reasons for this, but it's important to note that total mortality or death from all causes is the outcome that most people are interested in. If something slightly increases your risk of death from heart disease, but then decreases your risk of death from several different other causes, such that it lowers your overall risk of death, most people would consider that a win. Second, many recent studies have challenged the idea that LDL cholesterol is a strong independent risk factor for heart disease and have found that other risk factors like calcium score are far more reliable. Coronary artery calcium scoring has proven to be the single best predictor of fatal and non-fatal coronary events, including cardiovascular risk in diabetic and non-diabetic patients, as well as in young, middle-aged, and elderly patients. Calcium scoring is also a more accurate predictor of cardiovascular disease risk over periods of more than a decade. And it's worth noting that among people with FH, only half of them have high calcium scores despite significantly elevated LDL cholesterol levels. Third, large reviews of randomized controlled trials have shown that low carb diets improve virtually all cardiovascular risk factors other than LDL cholesterol, including body weight, body mass index, abdominal circumference, blood pressure, triglycerides, glucose, insulin, C-reactive protein, and HDL cholesterol. Studies by Verta Health, a company that uses low carb diet treatment programs to reverse type two diabetes, have shown that low carb diets significantly reduce 10-year cardiovascular risk scores. So when you put all of this together, it's clear that the mainstream idea that high LDL cholesterol is always a significant risk factor for heart disease is not supported by the evidence. So what about statins for people with high LDL cholesterol, but without many other risk factors? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research to inform this question, but there are two studies that give us some idea. The first was a randomized controlled trial based on the well-known 4S study, which looked at the impact of statins in reducing subsequent cardiovascular events in people with a history of heart disease. 
This study found that statins only reduce cardiovascular events in people with other risk markers like high triglycerides and low HDL. Statins had no effect in people that had high LDL but low triglycerides and high HDL, as is common on people following low-carb diets. Another randomized controlled trial, the PROSPER study, found similar results. This study looked at elderly men between the ages of 70 and 82 with pre-existing vascular disease or who were at increased risk of cardiovascular disease because they had hypertension, diabetes, and or were smokers. Now in this trial, statins only benefited men with low HDL regardless of their LDL cholesterol levels. In the discussion section of the paper, the authors noted that, quote, variation in baseline LDL concentrations did not relate to risk of coronary event or treatment efficacy. Benefit was predominantly in the lowest tertiale of HDL cholesterol. What about statins for people with high LDL, but who have not already had a heart attack or other cardiovascular event? Well, while there's still some debate here, most studies suggest that statins don't reduce the risk of death from all causes for people with high LDL, but few other risk markers. For example, a review showed that statins did not reduce total mortality in people with a 10-year cardiovascular disease risk of less than 20%. Using these criteria, just 2% of women in their 50s and 16% in their 60s qualified for statin therapy. For men, 9% in their 50s and 48% in their 60s qualified. This study used a 10-year cardiovascular risk calculator called Q-Risk. As a hypothetical example, I used Q-Risk to calculate the 10-year cardiovascular risk of a hypothetical person with the following variables. White male, 6 foot 2 inches tall, 180 pounds, 50 years old, non-smoker, no diabetes, no history of heart or kidney disease, not taking blood pressure medication, and doesn't have rheumatoid arthritis, which is one of the questions that the calculator asks. Then the calculator asks for the total cholesterol to HDL ratio. You get that by dividing total cholesterol by HDL. I use 300 milligrams per deciliter for total cholesterol and 65 milligrams per deciliter for HDL cholesterol. Now that's a very high number for total cholesterol, but it's consistent with what you might see in someone with familial hypercholesterolemia or in someone who adopted a low carb diet and saw a huge increase in their LDL afterward. With these inputs, the 10 year cardiovascular risk was 4.4%. That is well below the 20% risk threshold at which statins start to provide a benefit in people without pre-existing heart disease. The Q-Risk calculator is available online, so you can use it to calculate your own risk. To summarize what we've covered in this video, number one, LDL cholesterol is not a strong risk factor for heart disease in the absence of other risk factors like a high calcium score, insulin resistance, hypertension, etc. Number two, low-carb diets have been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease even when LDL cholesterol is high. And number three, Statin drugs have not been shown to reduce the risk of death in people without pre-existing heart disease uh, who have a low risk profile or in people who've already had a heart attack with high LDL but with low triglycerides and high HDL. For more information about this topic, check out my two free eBooks, The Lowdown on Low Carb and The Diet Heart Myth. I'll put the links to them in the description of the video. Also check out my Tuesday tip videos on the low carb diet for diabetes and blood sugar disorders and artificial sweeteners for people on low carb diets. Okay, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the subscribe button in the lower right of this video and tap the notification bell so you'll be updated when I release new content. And if you know someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them by clicking the share button right under the video. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time.